they always get the little two packs, you know, the little fun size things. Yeah. And I might be the only person alive who does not like the pink ones. Everyone else is obsessed with the pink ones. And I think Starburst, I like all the other flavors so much better than the pink ones. And I think Starburst knows that everyone likes them because there is an inordinate number of double pinks. It's- Oh, double pinks, double is. pinks. And you have no and I and I'm not going to like toss them back in the candy jar. So that's so fucked up. So if I'm like, I'm like, this is my piece of candy for the day. I'm really going to enjoy this. And I open it up and it's two pinks, which happens a lot. The level of anger that it's just, really- <laughs> you know, yeah, that's that's just terrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's never double pinks. What's that? Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Pixel It. Right off the bat, getting kind of graphic. (laughs) I mean, I guess you could go there. My name is Kevin. With me, as always, is Phil. Uh, Hello. (laughs) Today, we're starting a brand new series. Uh, Where I put... uh, You have it? I left my my book in the bedroom. Don't worry. Don't Um, worry. I got one. I got it. I got it. (laughs) You got it. Uh, We're starting uh, King's Quest, The Floating Castle by Craig Mills. Yeah. And... uh, yeah, so King's Quest, for those of you who don't know, was a pretty popular series in the mid 80s to mid 90s thereabouts. Uh, it started out in 1984 with King's Quest. You know, if you look at the Wikipedia page, which it's funny, it actually lists a game called The Wizard and the Princess as technically the first King's Quest game. That's right. Yeah, that was as like, like a prelude to King's yeah. Quest. Um, four years before, but after after King's Quest hits, it's a pretty regular. Uh, series for the next uh, ten or so years, and then and then a last one in 1998, uh, and they they rebooted it, so to speak, in in 2015. But mm-hmm. obviously, we haven't really seen much beyond that for King's Quest. But it was a series that followed a number of different protagonists. Most of the time, it was a man named King Graham and his adventures through the lands of Daventry. Sometimes it was his son, Prince Alexander. A couple times, or at least one time, it was his daughter and his wife, I believe, were the protagonists yeah. uh, in the game. Um, so, yeah, we're we're going to dive into a book called The Floating Castle, which takes place in between, uh, somewhere in the timeline of, of King's Quest, in between uh, King's Quest IV, The per- Perils of Rosella, and King's Quest VI, Hair air today, gone tomorrow. Uh, with with absence makes the heart go yonder uh, somewhere in the middle. And that's there. just one of the main themes with uh, <laughs> King's Quest games. Those kind of punny. <laughs> it's really punishing titles. Uh, well, the whole uh, game was like that. The whole game yeah. was filled with that stuff. It was it was a and, lot. And I was never a, a Sierra kid. I played the Lucas games, the Lucas Arts, Lucas yeah. Film games, games. Um, I'm yeah, and he's my, got the he's got cred. the Sierra T right yes. on there. See, that was my um, point and click. You were you were Lucas not, Arts guy. It's not I was even a Sierra a, it's, guy. It's, it's well, not even a yeah, Sierra T-shirt. It's it's a Sierra tank top. Jesus, tank top. Oh, look at those showing shoulders. off. Look at those. Look at those. Look at those freckled. <laughs> the sun damaged shoulders. Sun sun damaged shoulders of an of an Irishman of right an Irishman. there. <laughs> oh man, we never learned. We never learned. We did not wear sunscreen. That is a fact. Uh, it didn't work out. So mm. yeah, uh, King's Quest. Uh, most uh, a good chunk of the series is a uh, text parser where it would be like go yonder and uh another half of the series is point and click um and they were brutally hard yes that's yes that was kind of the thing they so something both sierra and lucasfilm lucasarts games had in common was the moon logic where it was basically like i why would you ever do that that's not a, yeah that's not a puzzle that's just too what um yeah, yeah so they both kind of had problems with that <laughs> When they had and they had these unbreakable failure states uh, where if you didn't do something at a specific time, you could not progress and you wouldn't necessarily find out about that until like way down the line. Right. Uh, And you as a kid without the Internet uh, or something like that would just sit there and stare like wondering what the fuck am I supposed to do here? Yeah. 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 There's yeah. There's a like I remember. um 
and uh, and Zach McCracken, which was uh, Lucasfilm's games. Uh, there's a failure state early on where if you you can accidentally throw away some breadcrumbs. Yeah. And you wouldn't know it until much later in the game that you can't do the thing that you needed to do anymore with those breadcrumbs. It is literally like 75% of the way through the game. <laughs> it's freaking nuts. It is just like, and I know that they had those, you know, um, phone lines that they were trying yes, to get they had their the money phone for. Lines. Yeah. And, but you do kind of understand it when you, if you revisit these now in the modern day where you've got uh, walkthroughs and everything like that and you go, Oh, this took 45 minutes to beat. No wonder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no wonder they're not, so they're not very long experiences overall. No. I mean, uh, I remember, I think maniac mansion, you can get through, uh, ridiculously fast if you know the exact things to do. Yeah, um, yeah. And honestly, that kind of game design doesn't really die out until, I mean, Monkey Island is the first of the Lucas games that totally gets rid of failure states. Like, basically, yes. it just, it stops you from, there's only one fail state in, in uh, The Curse of Monkey Island, and that is... Uh, at some point in the game, Guybrush says he can hold his breath for 10 minutes. There's yeah. a point in which he's thrown underwater. If you le sit on that screen for 10 minutes, he dies. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but yeah, this that was just like, you know, you think about games like Castlevania even, where if, if it weren't for... Um, just the basically unfair rhythmic patterns of the monsters and stuff that you had to basically get down right. to rope memorization. Uh, Castlevania, you watch, you watch people just playing through Castlevania who played it a million times, takes them an hour and a half. Yes. Uh, it's not, it's not that these are huge epic games. They just felt that way because they were so difficult. And, and but they made, I, I feel like the Sierra and LucasArts games though made up for it because they did give you a great big weird world and, it was so much fun to pick your way through it. So, right. Yeah. So, um, this book has an author, Phil, what do you know about him? Uh, this is Craig Mills and we actually don't know a ton about him. I, I, I've been digging through, um, some of his information here. Apparently he passed, uh, in 2002. So unfortunately we won't, uh, we won't have him to, uh, uh, harass for an interview on this particular one, but uh, he there were three of these King's Quest novels. This is the first one, and he this is the only one he wrote. Um, he's mostly known after that for some of these very uh, kind of they're kind of glorious looking. I want to get them because uh, they're cheap and they 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 look like my childhood. This one this was written in 1995, but. He also wrote uh, books like Shadow of the Crown, Bane of Lord Caledon, and Dreamer in Discord. And you see the 80s fantasy art that's playing in your head when I say yeah. those titles? That's that's yeah. the cover of these paperbacks. These are 80s uh, so fantasy. It's, it's, is, it as, is it Frank Verzetta? Uh, not quite that cool, uh, oh. It's but it's that kind of the schlockier D&D &D, uh, oh, okay. uh, kind Got of it. thing. And, and, and I... I love it. Uh, when you, I when, just, I, when uh, the Frank Frazetta, by the way, it, when you say it, it's not cool. Isn't that the word? It's the word is horny is the word. You're, well, you're I mean, that to me, horny will never be anything less than cool. Sure. Uh, but <laughs> no, the one, if you look up the Bane of Lord Caledon <laughs> in particular, that is just, that is classic eighties fantasy cheese. It came out in 1982 you can probably you can get it like online for a handful of bucks. I just want this on the oh, shelf. Yeah, it's Look just got like a big, big fucking green dragon. Yeah, some and knight. a guy on a on a horse just I going. Ah, I got a sword. Stuff. I love it, <laughs> and I he's like it. in no position to deal with this dragon. None, There's none whatsoever. <laughs> none whatsoever. I love this kind of thing. Uh, so it fills me with hope. Um. He, after that, I find, I, you know, there isn't much after that, except for I am actually seeing he's been attributed credit for uh, a few word search books. 
uh, sure. like the like the the newspaper style ones your your grandmother got at the Winn Dixie. Uh, that yeah. is uh, that is that was something uh, apparently he did for a little while. Uh, I mean, you know what? Whatever pays the bills. Uh, no, Whatever pays no, the bills. No shade, Craig, and rest in peace, sir. Rest in uh, rest in so, peace, Craig. So that's what you we've know? got. Yeah. So, all right. Well, that's 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 the that's the game. That's the uh, that's the author. Uh, mm-hmm. So let's talk about the book and uh, let's go ahead and put this body in the mosh. Let's put the body let's in the put mosh. The, put the body in the mosh. In the mosh. When I say put the body in the mosh, you put, put the body the in body the fucking mosh. In the mosh. I love it. It's not Look, where see, some we can guy from John this. Hancock gets a <laughs> We can we can keep up with this. See, see, <laughs> see. All right. I know what we're doing? Floating Castle, Chapter One. Uh, we got Alexander. Alexander is our main character in this book. He would eventually get his own game. He has his own game, which mm-hmm. is the the uh, air today, gone tomorrow. Yep. Um, and uh, so Alexander, Prince Alexander, book opens with him returning to the castle from a walk he was taking. Collecting his thoughts. There's a storm brewing, though, and he's getting back into the castle because he doesn't want to get caught in the rain. Too late. He gets caught in the rain. Sure. Um, as he's walking in, he talks to the guard at the gate and he's like, hey, buddy. And the guard's like, my name's Henry. And we're like, I know, Henry. All right. Henry comes back later for reasons that are they, they seem clear <laughs> for reasons that are unclear. Um, yeah. <laughs> and he's. He looks up at the, at the dark clouds in the sky and he thinks he sees a castle floating in the cloud. That's impossible. And if it That's weren't weird. for the title of this book, I would be like, he's seeing things. Yeah, of course. <laughs> if Kevin came to me, I respect Kevin. He's yeah. one of my best friends. I see him as a brother. And if Kevin said to me, I uh, saw a castle uh, floating in the clouds, I'd say, Kevin, you're full of shit and probably mescaline. So... <laughs> That's it's, that's probably you. You getting into that fentanyl again? Yeah, it's not the, about disrespecting Prince Alexander. It's no. about being real. It's about being real. Uh-huh. Uh, and we got a bunch of CR characters. Put them in a house, and the that's when when things stop being fake and start to get start real. Getting real. Oh my god! Real, Can you real imagine world a, Sierra? Oh my god! I would. I'd produce that. Oh my god! You put Leisure Suit Larry, King Graham. <laughs> Fucking uh oh, what was the janitor in Space Quest and like all the oh, yeah, all yeah. in there? Oh the the, co- the the cop from Police Quest. Yes. Oh Is my it, god, get Ken and Roberta Williams on the line. Get them on the horn. <laughs> oh my god. He's not a cop. He's um, not a, no fucking cop. I'm not I'm no fucking cop. Two weeks. <laughs> Two weeks with pay. World needs plenty of bartenders. Are you guys uh, are you guys still listening? <laughs> Are you still listening? <laughs> please be listening. Validate us, please. Uh, please. Um, so he gets he gets inside the castle. He visits with his parents, and his parents are like, "Why are you so fucking wet?" And uh, <laughs> his his Which father, King question. Graham, his father, King Graham, is very troubled because the magic mirror that he uses to look into the future is no longer working. And mm. normally, you know, the magic mirror would have warned him that a big ass storm was coming. And it didn't. Uh, in fact, when Alexander looks into it, it, it seems to have a touch of evil. Uh, shout out to Orson Welles uh, yep. embedded into it. And then we go one long take as we follow Alexander from the, the room up into his bedroom. It's a touch of evil reference for those yep. of you. Um Anyway, the film majors, the film majors <laughs> the film in the audience. <laughs> the next morning, uh, Alexander wakes up, gets dressed, goes to the top of the castle. He's sipping his coffee and he up oh, the castle that he saw in the sky is has settled down like just down river from from where hit their castle is. So it's no longer a, ca- a floating castle. It is a landed castle. It's a it's a castle castle. It's a regular castle. Regular castle. So the floating portion of this castle from the title lasted all of chapter one. Yes, exactly. Because that's the end of chapter one. We're on chapter two now. Uh, 
<laughs> in the throne room, the king is talking with peasants. It's been a few days, and he's you know, they're they're bringing their troubles to him. Uh, things have gone to shit since the castle has landed. There's there's knights, black knights, uh, with their their black armor and the swords and stuff. They're going out and they're raiding everything, and yep. uh, crops are being stolen, valuables taken. And Graham and Alexander discuss what to do next. And Alexander's like, I'm going to kick his ass. And Graham's like, no, uh, yeah. you're not <laughs> you're not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to call in the Knights of Daventry, which is the kingdom. And we're going to talk about it, buddy. Yeah, because that's Can that's way more on brand uh, for Graham and his and his ilk. Yeah. And it's like, let's be a little more pragmatic, you know? Yeah. yeah. Another few days pass. Uh, and there's a large meeting between the king and all of the knights. And each of the knights has a debate about what should be done. And they just take turns saying meaningless bullshit. Um, and then there's a disturbance in the courtyard. And in comes our villain, a sorcerer named Telgrin. And two of his black knights walk into the throne room. And he declares himself the king of Daventry. Dun, dun, dun. Um... Very confident, this guy. He is very confident. Yeah. Graham moves to attack the man, and Telgrin casts a spell on him, causing him to faint. Alexander debates whether he should attack Telgrin or go to his father. He decides to go to his father, being a good son. And uh, Graham is, he's out cold. Yeah. Uh, so Telgrin leaves, and Alexander follows Telgrin outside, and he asks Henry, who we set up earlier, the guard at the gate, because there's a guard at the gate named Henry. We set him up. Remember Henry? Remember Henry? You guys Henry? paid attention, right? Yeah. Henry. Anyway, he yeah. asks Henry where they went, and Henry sa- goes, that way. <laughs> <laughs> he sure does. <laughs> <laughs> he that way's with the best of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's just, he's damn good at his job. <laughs> he's damn good at his job. Um, Henry, uh, Alexander asks Henry for a horse and Henry's like, you shouldn't do that because you don't have a plan. I'm like, OK, look at Henry. Look, look at Henry. Like, look at Henry being now that being now that smart. your father is out of the picture. I'm your father. I'm your right, father Henry. now, Alexander. Yeah. In fact, I always was your father. Oh, your mother has something. To- <laughs> what a twist. <laughs> what a what twist. A twist. Henry is the true king of Daventry. And he spent his entire time as as a guard getting just, to know the people. He just dealt with it. He just let King Graham cuck him uh, into a shitty, probably, let's face it, minimum wage, a uh, 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 front facing guard job. Yeah. Henry, you moron. Henry, you fucking, Ugh. you fucking lobster. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I was thinking, I was thinking incel and then Jordan mm-hmm. Peterson. And then I thought lobsters. I, I, I feel like I saw where you were going with it. I just needed to hear it <laughs> in your own words. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I think we're just a little slap happy tonight. You're just going to have to, you're going to have to cope with both. It's of just because this book is so weird, man. It's yeah. too cha- It's, it's like, this is the, we've got been through two chapters and, and I make it seem like things are happening, but it's like. These these things don't take very long to happen over the course. This has been like 35 pages and no, like yeah. four beats have happened. Most of these pages that I just kind of glossed over were Alexander walking places. And uh, and and the thing is, is we get all of these details that like they literally will tell you like he had he's he's on his way uh, out the door and he takes with him. Uh, something, whereas in any other book, it would say he took a little something to eat along the way. And in this book, it says he took a crust of bread, a small pear, uh, a, a wedge of cheese and a, a knife to cut it all up and everything like that. And the first time the author does this, you go, OK, well, King's Quest is very much an items based. All of these sure. kinds of games, yeah. they're all about all the shit you bring with you. And so you right. go, OK, this makes a lot of sense. Um, and then nothing happens with it. And so by the fifth or sixth or seventh time, he mentions uh, the cobblestones under his feet uh, or some other random superfluous detail. You realize he, he, uh, we're not sun. going anywhere he, with this. He, did, he liked the feel of the sun on his face. And right. Like, yeah, he sure does. Sure. This is the third time you've mentioned it. Yeah. Yeah. He <laughs> likes the sun. That's how a lot of us are. 
as it turns out. It's a, it it provides us with a with with nutrients. Can with we a, get to the story, vitamin. please? Yeah, let's yeah. get to the story. Chapter yeah. three. Um, the visi- the physician comes down, says nothing he can do for the king. He's physically mm. fine, but there's something else wrong with him. Something <gasps> something the matter. Magical. Um, so Alexander is like, all right, I'm going to go see the wizard. Uh, the wizard's name is Morrowind. I could not let that one drop. Uh, <laughs> as an, as an Elder Scrolls fan, I couldn't, I couldn't. Every time they said the wizard's name, I imagined like riding some <laughs> long legged beetle creature across the red desert or something like that. I'm like, this is, I can't let go of this. I just can't. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I I literally failed a college course because of that fucking game. Yeah. I I could have been a doctor or something if it wasn't for Morrowind. That's not true. Uh, that's not that's, true. That's not true. Uh, no. We, we love you just the way you are, Phil. And Thank we you. love you. You're, you got just, no choice. <laughs> just as the, we love you with the degrees you have. Thank God. <laughs> Celsius. <laughs> oh, Celsius. <laughs> Kelvin. Um, mm. Let's see. He goes to see uh, Morrowind. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Alexander takes a long journey to see the wizard. It's four and a half pages long and takes most of the day. Sure. <sighs> it sure does. <laughs> the four and a half pages of just him walking. Um, I'm just describing his walk. And and I <laughs> and I'm going to emphasize this one more time. It's not important. It it doesn't it doesn't get used <laughs> in if, any way. If you're a starting out writer, don't do this stuff. Don't do it. Don't describe a walk for four and a half pages unless oh it's God. truly is it is it is it is it important to the character or the plot? Yeah. If the answer is no both times, then you could probably cut it. There are writers out there that can take a minute to just describe the beauty of the surroundings and that oh, sort of thing to help establish, you know, but this is not I'm sorry to the late Craig Mills. Uh, this, he's not one of those writers. Uh, yeah. So we need to, yeah. we need to move and it on. That's the thing is we, we bring up the uh, writer of the Far Cry novel, Urban Waite a lot. And Urban yeah. Waite was actually really good at like this poetic description of the surroundings in, uh, was it Montana? Um, yeah. He was, I mean, it was, it, it was beautiful, you know? Uh, yeah. This is just like, Random fantasy bullshit. Like, there's a field and there's trees and the sun. It's barely that though. That's it's the barely thing. that. And he's eating it's pears. Like, yeah. Like, well, like, um, uh, a great example is Shadow Keep, which we yeah. read last year. Uh, which is also '80s pulp fantasy, and 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 ultimately wasn't uh, an amazing book, but holy shit, we got sucked into that world there for a minute. Right. Uh, and 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 a lot of that was eighties fantasy bullshit, <laughs> you know. Yeah, peak eighties fantasy bullshit. Absolutely. Uh, this is this is almost more like a laundry list. <laughs> it's just like you know, it's like you ever you, you ever that that uh, I think it was the old man of the sea opens with he went to the sea the sea was there. Uh, it's it's like a somehow less interesting version of that. Yeah, you know, <laughs> he went to the woods. They were there. There were leaves. Uh, on the ends of the trees. leaves were there. The bugs, yeah. the bugs were there too. Bugs were there too. There were birds. He, oh, he does talk about the birds and how the birds like fucking Disney princess him a yeah. few times where yeah. they like fly along with him as he's walking. Well, and, and I'll tell you what, and I'll tell you the, the most confusing thing about this, because it sounds like I'm coming down pretty hard on this and maybe I am, but it's still incredibly in world. Uh, it is insanely sure. uh, uh, um, appropriate and in tune with the king's quest because it is very fairy tale, very squeaky clean. Right. Uh, uh, it, it, it's it really does work as far as getting the world across. It just it's just not as interesting in book form so far as it is in the game. Right. Yeah. We haven't had any inventory puzzles yet. <laughs> We gotta Not get yet. one later, but we'll get, get one. We'll, 
we'll get there. Um, yeah. So he he, he uh, gets to the wizard's house, uh, and Morrowind has been turning into a tree. Uh, he messed up a spell about nine months ago that would extend his life, and now he's turning into a tree because yeah. trees live longer than people. Uh, yeah. Morrowind says, based on the information provided, that it seems like Graham's soul has been stolen and he will die if he doesn't get it back. Uh, and he also says he can't move, but his apprentice, Cyril, can help. Um, and Cyril is just, you know, a, a chubby little 16 year old, you know, me just kind of. <laughs> Did you did you feel a connection to this? Guy? I felt like I felt an immediate connection to Cyril. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> so, um, chapter four, uh, we get the information from Morrowind. Oh, by the way, Cyril is not allowed to use magic because it would mess up his learning right now. So yeah, he's not, he doesn't. He he's not ready. He's not ready. He's not for ready sports. to actually cast spells. He's like yeah. he knows a lot about magic. Don't worry, but don't ask him to cast any spells. He hasn't. He's not there yet. Uh, right. It would be a bad idea. It would be a bad idea. Uh, so Cyril and Alexander they bond a little bit as they walk back to Castle Daventry. It takes another like fifty pages for the walk back. Um, Mm -hmm. And not much happens. Um, Alexander and his mother, uh, Queen Valenice. Is it Valenice? Valenice? Uh, Valenice, I think. Valenice takes Cyril to where the king is laying. And Cyril says, yep, Morrowind had it right. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, (laughs) He literally goes over and goes, yeah, what he said. What he said. I'm confirming the diagnosis. Um. The differential diagnosis is confirmed. It's a uh, stolen soul. Yep. Uh, we got to get the soul back, soul back in there. If if and we got to get it back uh, fast. AF. I wrote in my notes um, yep. because the longer the soul is in the hands of uh, Telegram, it's going. <laughs> Telgren. It's Tel- going to. <laughs> <laughs> right. Telegram. Um, Telegram. <laughs> Canagram. <laughs> Um, yeah, the longer it's in his hands, the more corrupt it's going to be. Yeah. And so. and also, uh, is this where they uh, where they imply that he likes to he doesn't just uh, he doesn't just collect the souls. He does things to the soul. He does things does to the things. souls, which in like age appropriate thought process, it's like, oh, he tortures them. Sure. Um, yeah. Sure. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. you know, you can get real in the gutter with that. You, oh, um, it's super easy. It's super easy. Take it so from me. That was, that was chapter four. <laughs> We're chapter five now. The chapter's moving a little bit faster now. Uh, yeah. Cyril uh, convinces Alexander to take him along for the journey because he can help. Uh, they leave in the morning and travel, and Alexander has no plans to, on how to get into the castle, but he thinks he can figure out uh, a, a something. And uh, well, no, yeah, walking- he had just he just straight up says, like, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to fucking, you know, wing this. I'm going <laughs> to totally wing the every bit of this plan. It's like, OK, we're going. Um, All right. So no plan, Alexander. Um, they're they're walking along the path. They hear a horse coming. It's one of the black knights and they have to hide in the woods. It's the end of chapter five. Uh, yeah. Chapter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's it's such a it's such a um, what is it the witch kings and uh, and uh, Frodo kind of seed like I can yeah. totally I totally expect him to pull a ring out of nowhere and just yeah. disappear. Um, chapter six, uh, they had successfully hidden from the night. By the way, yep. um, so that night, uh, N I uh, not K N. Um, that Very night, good. Alexander wakes up and he finds himself in the court of Kulatha. A queen of the fairy. Um, yes. And she asks Alexander if he's going to get rid of the dark castle. And he says, yeah, that's the goal. And in return for that, she gives him a wallet filled with sweet bread that will never run out. Now, I don't know about you, but I would probably just be like, all right, well, I think that was a good enough trip. I don't think I really. Yeah, probably fine. Uh, we are all. Fed. My entire all kingdom fed. is fed. The, frankly. the kingdom is fed with this this unending bread wallet, right? Right, right. That is <laughs> totally worth the loss of my father. <laughs> I mean, we've got we've got the bread wallet from the Fae 
no one will ever go hungry ever again. I love you, dad. We'll, we'll erect several churches in your honor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But holy shit. Bread wallet. We got, we got some Jesus bread in this wallet. Jesus bread. It's apparently (laughs) delicious. It's filling. You can have as much of it as you want. It gives you energy. You feel better after eating it. You don't feel like you're, you got to poop or anything. Monster energy bread. Monster (laughs) energy. It's delicious. No, no it's, sugar. Have this sweet bread sponsored by Monster. Yeah. <laughs> and they all come out. There are three of them. They all come out in that weird little slashy M. Yeah. And it's 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 for gamers. So it has yeah. RGB trim, like right. lighting trim on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's delicious. It's so, delicious. Yeah. Um, the next morning he wakes up. Cyril's bummed that he didn't get to see the fairies. Uh, they eat some bread. It's delicious. I write my notes. Yeah, they eat it. They talk about how delicious. We get we get this little aside about him being a little nervous because, and I thought this was a great touch. the The fae, the fairy people, are very well known for being capricious and fickle, and and yeah. they're easily offended. And often with their gifts, there's something bad underlying it. Uh, but don't worry about it. We don't just, worry. This is all. Yeah, it's, it's fine. This is perfectly good bread. It's just endless it's bread. bread. It's fine. It's, bread. it's endless bread. Don't don't uh, think too much about it. They pick some apples as they leave the forest, yep. and uh, Alexander has some uh, moral dilemma over it that lasts all of like a, a sentence. Yeah. Um, and then he's like, yeah, just fucking pick the apples. Just so they take the apples, apples and they see smoke on the horizon. Like, oh no, let's check it out. And we're going to check that out in chapter seven. In chapter seven, they find a farm that it's been attacked and, uh, you know, people are all beat up and they tell the people there that they're on the way to the castle to deal with, with the guy that's causing all this. And also, can we borrow that rope? Right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and I thought, and I honestly thought these are people who had, they say like these, these knights came, they took all of our food, all of our, all of our everything. I thought this was going to be a moment where they would be like, oh, well, we have this wallet of infinite bread. So you and the townsfolk, whatever might happen, will never go hungry. And, um, no, he fucking doesn't tell them. About no, the they just Why say we- they just say we promised to figure things out, and can we borrow your rope? Uh, didn't even leave him with bread. No, he didn't. Yeah, didn't even offer. Didn't even offer. Look, I'm sorry. I know that there's a level of nitpicking that can become a, kind of obnoxious in a fantasy <laughs> magical land. This is not one I can get over. This is worse than the Eagles taking. The hobbits to Mount Doom. Like this, I can't. He just got the bread in the previous chapter. He just got it. It's infinite. These people have nothing. You couldn't at least like open it up and make it rain some bread and then leave. Even if you wanted to hold on to the fucking wallet, you can go, well, I can get, I could give you like 200 pieces of bread, you know, turn it into croutons or something. So it doesn't go moldy. I don't know. It's magic bread. Take it. Take some no. magic bread. You know, um, build it, build, rebuild your house out of bread. I don't care. Yeah, something. I got infinite bread. <laughs> he doesn't even do this. This is why the monarchy is bullshit. Of this course is why he the doesn't. monarchy is bullshit. Of course, Alexander wouldn't know. He to doesn't do that. know. He doesn't know. He's he the one. Suffer. He's a one percenter. He's a. Yeah. He's, a, he's one percent of the one percent. He's his, rich. It, yeah, and his, he he doesn't know the struggle yeah. of oh. of the peasant. No, his 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 uh, you know, his intentions are good, but yeah. he doesn't even know where to begin with his intentions. No, he sees the big picture, which is dealing with the castle, but he's missing all the little details of like, hey, keep people fed. You know, yeah, yeah. No, so being he, a king in these games is just going on adventures. So don't just worry. Going, just walking around just screens and collecting items and solving puzzles. That's pretty yeah. much the job. That's, That's pretty the much job it. of the king. That's the job. Um, That's the job. Open. So show. honestly, Graham, Alexander, all of them. Uh, guillotine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, Pixelit says eat the rich. Eat the rich, uh, especially <laughs> the king's quest. 
uh, uh, heroes, protagonists. You did this to me. You you eat, you did this to yourself, Graham. Eat the, eat, eat the rich and steal their bread wallet. Their infinite bread wallet. <laughs> steal their magic bread wallet. Let let them eat infinite bread. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Prince Alexander was quoted as saying. I got uh, uh, a magic infinite bread wallet. Why can't these kids just go out there and do the same thing I did? I worked hard for my infinite bread wallet. <laughs> so um, I was taking a walk and I found it. <laughs> I found this. I found it. I uh, earned it. I, I was taking a walk as or that I, that I earned as part of my royal station. Absolutely. By inheritance. Yes. Um so anyway, the people that live in the house also warn them about a Kelpie that lives in the uh, water near the bridge. Yeah. Um, so they get to the bridge and form a plan. Now, is the plan to keep feeding the Kelpie like infinite bread until it gets sick? No. Yeah, <laughs> no. I I got to tell you, this is where I started to have flashbacks to these games where <laughs> It was like, look, I know there's a specific answer to this, but I can think of like nine different ways to solve this with the things I already have at hand. And honestly, there's very little that infinite fairy bread can't solve. Yeah. Um, So what the solution ultimately ends up being for this puzzle is Cyril throws apples into the water. Remember the apples? Yep. Uh, Those were in the inventory. Uh, Use apple on water. And eventually that causes the Kelpie to come out of the water to try to eat the apple. Yep. But when it tries to come out and eat the apple, uh, Alexander uses the rope to uh, wrap around the kelp because a kelp. I forgot to explain what a Kelpie is. Oh, uh, please explain what a Kelpie is. A Kelpie is basically a horse that lives in the water. Yep. Yeah. That's it. It's like it's, a demon water a, horse. It's not a seahorse. No, nope. it's. It is a demon water. Yeah, demon. It's a horse. It looks like a horse, but with like, I don't know, like seaweed mane or yeah. whatever detail they want to add to it. Yeah. Uh, and it lives underwater. So um, anyway, the he has to break the Kelpie, uh, much like you break a horse. So he lassoes it. He gets on its back. It, it tries to buck him off. There's there's a while where he's you know trying to buck Alexander off. He slams Alexander into the bridge a few times, yeah. um, and then he gives up. The Kelpie's like fuck fuck this. What do you? This is terror. This is tor-. the Kelpie starts talking to him like, what do you want, bro? Yeah yeah, <laughs> really pissy, Just like, dude. All right, what what is it? And he's like, let us pass the bridge. And the Kelpie's like, no, my it's in my nature to kill people that try to cross the bridge. And he's like, all right, Scorpion, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's very <laughs> frog and scorpion. <laughs> it's very frog and scorpion. So he's like, just, I'll stop trying to break you if you just leave. And the Kelpie, and leave Daventry. And the Kelpie's like, fine. Bye. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, it, this is, this is honestly, this is intensely King's Quest. Like, this is where I was like, <laughs> okay, now we're back on track. It still this, makes zero sense, but in a in a King's Quest kind of this way. This is very King's Quest. And, you know, you know add silly. apple to rope, put rope <laughs> apple in water, and then you get a weird little pixelated animated scene of him oh. riding the Kelpie <laughs> and a voiceover of the Kelpie going, what are you doing in my lair? You know, but it would be just, like really crunched because it's, yeah. you know, old audio. Yeah, because it's all be like, on like floppy disks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah. And you just and he just goes, look, I'll 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 stop writing you if you promise to leave and never, never harm a human again. Yeah, never, har- a- never. Har- like uh, the guy just got over saying, like, this is my nature. This is what I do. And he's like, I don't give a shit. I'm going to inconvenience you mildly. Uh, until you're, you're you promise, gonna be my only inconvenience yeah, until, until you, you promise. promise to 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 fight against your nature and leave. And Kelpie goes, "Yes, you're fine. I don't know. You're fine. You're annoying. Okay, you're buddy. that annoying. You are that annoying." And I'm like, "I'm mm-hmm. just gonna, I'm just gonna go down to the next town and kill some people." Yeah, you won't be there. What are you gonna you do? Won't about be it? there. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Yeah. You gonna, you gonna follow do? me? No, with you're not rope apple. Is your stupid dad's dying or something? You stupid Fuck dad. It. Stupid dad. <laughs> um, 
This yeah, Kelpie book. leaves and says, fuck your father. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, and uh, they they nap again. They, they set up camp on the opposite side across the bridge. Um, chapter eight. They continue getting closer to the castle. They're they're getting a little pissy as they have to climb up hills. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, the, the, the next morning they continue on and they run into an ogre and the ogre is guarding a cart filled with stuff stolen from farms. And the ogre is just waiting for someone to come pick the food up while it, and while he waits, he's just sitting there munching on it. Yeah. Um, and Alexander's like, hello, ogre. And the ogre's like, what? And he's like, yeah. what are you doing? And the ogre's like, garden it. And Alexander's like, carry on. And continues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and Cyril's like, what, what if the ogre tried to like follow us or eat us or attack us? And he's like, eh, ogres are lazy. Like, they're, why would he, why would he follow us? He has a cart of food right there. <laughs> Just racially profiles this ogre racially profiles this ogre um and they get to the castle and they realize there's no way in until suddenly alexander shapes a plan and they have to go back dot 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 end of chapter eight and the end of the first 102 pages of the book it feels like not a lot happened in 102 pages it was a hundred pages yeah and yeah okay huh i feel like the could have been condensed a little bit. I feel like, yeah, um, I feel like. And I already had- know the solution to this puzzle. Like, I didn't read forward, but I understand. I'm taking it. I'm going to take. A, I'm going to predict. Yeah, I'm do take it. a wild stab that what they're going to do is hide in the cart underneath the f- the food. Yeah. And then the cart's going to get taken into the castle. Mm. And then they're in. Boom. Yep. That sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's 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 the first part of, of King's Quest. How are you feeling about it, Phil? You know, I I, I have uh, decided that before we meet again, I'm going to play through at least one of these games because I remember loving the King's Quest games. And this is making me paranoid that maybe they were all really boring. Uh, (laughs) because because this is intensely uh this is true to the franchise like it is it's it's meandering it's very cute it's uh and uh, but it's also really boring and uh i am terrified that uh that it's gonna be one of those revisit something from your childhood and hate it uh, kind of situation. Sure, sure. Uh, so that's something to look forward to. Yeah, uh, I don't. And and we were talking before the show. I don't have a lot to say about it. It's like what <laughs> it's hitting that mark of just like existing at a level yeah. in which I I just don't have anything. The be- the worst thing I, I I can say about it is that it's boring. Yeah. I, and I can't muster it. up a lot of anger. Yeah, it uh, does. <laughs> it's not that it's it's not that it's, it's badly written. It's not it's not going to launch me into a political rant here. Um, no, not this time. Not this time. Um, well, we did have a rant about the monarchy. Sorry. I, well, you I, know what? Totally fair. That's totally how boring fair. it is, though. We already That's put that boring. out of our mind. <laughs> um, yeah. God. Well. So King's Quest, we're going to we're going to we're going to power on through to the other side of this one. Uh, um, I mean, this, it was super easy to read, at least. So it was a light was read. That. Yeah, I got through it pretty quick. I I, it, 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 I feel like I read 100 pages in about an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there are two more of these books that were written by somebody else completely different. And now I'm kind of like forced to to make sure that the next ones are also on the schedule at some point. So we can sure. find out how it compares with a different yeah. author. Yeah. I, I, I do like, com- I do like that kind of comparison and mm. um, yeah. So anyway, yeah. What are you playing? <laughs> oh, I, uh, well, first and foremost, I, I finally beat midnight suns. Oh, so that was, an, I, I enjoyed it. Um, my my take on it essentially is that uh, 
It's a Firaxis game, which means sure. I enjoyed myself and was also deeply frustrated by it sure. uh, at various times. It is buggier than a grad student's apartment. Uh, yeah. It is it is just a mess. There were so many times that I had to like load old save games or restart sure. and stuff. And it's just, but that's just Firaxis. They they, yeah. they try to do so much with these things that they come out and- A little bit rough. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they're but. good enough that you keep at it. Uh, right. Uh, so, so I finished that up, and um, I actually started playing Tormented Souls this week. Okay, uh, which you played last year, didn't you? I, yeah, I might have. Uh, what it? What is that? What's that? that was oh, a, yes, that's the Resident Evil like, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Very similar. Uh, I very had some. I had some. It was like I, I. I'm trying to remember what I thought of it. I think I said fine. Except yeah. it has some weird relationship with disability. That There's some I wasn't weird ableist of. stuff in there. Weird, it yeah. goes, yeah, it definitely goes into um, just old fashioned tropes. Uh, yeah, of you know mental institution, right, right. Type which stuff. just they just it doesn't hit the same way it used to. It feels a little, it just feels a little outdated. Um, yep. It's a little sleazier. Uh, than uh, some of the older Resident Evils are. Within the first five minutes, we get our main character completely nude and soapy in a tub. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. She it's wakes an up evil tub, at, but uh, it's evil tub. tub. She wakes up yeah. at having been knocked out yeah. uh, in a tub, and her eye has been re- surgically has been removed. Removed. Yeah. Um, so I'm playing through it. I'm enjoying it. Uh, it it does it does scratch that itch. I, I'm coming to realize that sure uh, that Resident Evil puzzly kind of thing is is absolutely catnip for me. Uh, yeah. So it scratches that itch. Um, the por- uh, the forced perspective uh, uh, aspect of it, which is such a hallmark of the older Resident Evil games, is. Uh, uh, it's a trip. It's so funny to do that again. Uh, yeah. It's it's a little frustrating at times, but it can be. Yeah. That's how it was back then. too. Yeah. And sometimes with that, I mean, there would be times where I would play that game and then I'm like, all right, I got to well, I got to look up what where, what where I went wrong and I'd be like, oh, yeah, it's, you go get the thing that you missed in this room. And I'll be like. Oh, I just didn't see it there. Because That's, the that has been 90%. If I get stuck, 90% of it is I just, I didn't get close enough to this fucking shelf and have the button prompt to pick yeah. some damn thing up. That has been right. 90% of it. Having said that, um, I'm enjoying it. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll that's- probably I'll probably be done with it before too long. Uh, it's not, I don't think it's super long. I think it's about on, it'll, it, it'll time out about as long as like a Resident Evil right, game right. on your it's first got, playthrough. It's got the camp. Uh, yeah. uh, some of the designs are a little, the, the character designs are kind of meh. I love the, uh, the castle design though. Uh, oh yeah. The, the environment uh, design is yeah. amazing. Environment, environment design is terrific. The character design is a little, Ho hum, but uh, yeah, but yeah, no, I uh, so having fun, good time, cool, cool. What about cool. you? What are you playing, Kevin? <laughs> well, um, what am I playing? So, I, I'm I've been playing Dead Cells, um, because oh, Dead Cells. okay, the um, I the Castlevania update to Dead Cells is coming soon, and I was like, ah, oh, yeah, I'm gonna, okay. I'm just gonna, I had I played Dead Cells years ago. On the uh-huh. on the uh, switch, um, which is what I, I think was like originally released on the switch or something like that. And mm-hmm. Dead Cells, if you guys don't know, is a roguelike uh, Metroidvania um, where you play basically this this dude who has died. He has lost his head, but his like soul kind of like goes back into his headless body. Um, so he doesn't talk at all. Uh, he, he every yeah. character that he commu- communicates, he usually just he he can just like either shrug or he gives a thumbs up to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's a cute little game. Um, so yeah, you uh you just play and over the years since it's released, I think it came out I want to say 2015 or 2016 originally. Over the years since since its release, has kind of become like this indie. Um, it's almost like indie Smash Brothers, um, mm. I want to say, because a lot of other indie games have had their characters and weapons and stuff co-opted into it. So like there's like 
Shovel Knight stuff in there. Um, there is, uh, you can get the crowbar from, um, um, what's it? From a, uh, a, a Half-Life. A Half-Life, yeah. Yeah, you can get the Half-Life crowbar. Uh, you can get um, the nail from Hollow Knight. Um, which was the That's super fun, which was the bugs, uh, uh, sword is called a nail. Yeah. Uh, it's really cute. And, you, and, oh, and my, one of my favorites is you can get the baseball bat from hotline Miami. Oh, oh gosh. I haven't played that in a thousand years. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> and when you initially find all these weapons, you, there'll be like a, cause the dead cells, the, the theming of the cat, it's like, you know, a castle and then there's like, you know, sewers and there's all mm. these different areas, right? But they're all very castle like sometimes you run into like a special room. And the first time I walked into this one room where it was just like regular furniture and a TV and there's a there's a like a, a, a telephone on the table and you like pick it up and it's it's basically the hotline Miami telephone that you pick up <laughs> with the guy talking <laughs> to you and when you when you use the hotline Miami baseball bat the numbers the damage numbers above the enemies changes to that font oh that was, that's <laughs> hilarious I love that okay that's great that's great it's it's there's it's like such fun little stuff and so uh, there's a, they have an update coming dead cells return to Castlevania um, oh, where basically yeah. there, it's like the entire game gets themed like like ca- like a roguelike Castlevania, uh, so to speak. So <laughs> um, I, that's what I'm really lo- waiting for, looking forward to when that comes that's out. So fun, but yeah, I, I remember, played Dead Cells and warmed up a bit on it. I and, don't remember a lot about that game, uh, but I remember it felt amazing to play. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> Less. <sighs> Do I got another one? Is there another one coming? Allergic no. to greatness. I'm allergic to greatness. That's um, why we have to do this uh, podcast long distance, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, it's it's a lot of fun to play, and I recommend um, I recommend it. Like if you're, uh, you know, if you just need a side-scrolling action platformer, roguelike. Uh, that's you really can't go wrong with dead cells. Nice. I mean, it, it can just be basically be a, a, a like a forever game. You know, just a game you return to from time to time. Yeah. Um, so dead cells, and I'm playing Dead Space the remake. <gasps> oh, okay, okay. I need to hear yes. it because I because I only played the. Uh, the trilogy of this game. Yeah, you played game, the trilogy, yeah. Uh, uh, last year. That was my introduction to it. So there's yeah. a part of me that's kind of excited about this remake, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, eh, I played it last year. Uh- <laughs> yeah, you could probably... So if you've just played the uh, Dead Space, the original, you could probably wait a little bit before mm-hmm. dumping jumping into the remake. That being said, there is enough difference between the original and the remake to... to like the lighting is complete is it's amazing that there will be some areas where the I didn't remember having to like basically keep my gun up because the there's a flashlight on Isaac's like weapon. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. In um, in the remake, you need to basically in some areas, you just need to have that flashlight up all the time because you are not going to see anything. Oh, um, there's okay, just like okay. some ambient lighting and some this thing scurrying like around the corner or whatever. And you just like flashlight up. Um, it's, it's got some really nice lighting. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with it and nice. I've, um, it's weird. All I don't, I what was it two years ago that I played dead space for the first time. Um, and it was, um, I love it. I love, I mean, one and two, I love, and I don't hate three as much as other people do. (laughs) It wasn't, it wasn't that offensively bad. It wasn't that offensive. It was just frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) but, um, yeah, uh, 
it, so I'll be like, oh, I don't really remember this. And then suddenly there will be, I'll get into a room to like, um, where there will be like a puzzle. I'll be like, oh no, I remember exactly what I got to do here. Right. <laughs> like, right. Uh, I'm, I'm doing the tram thing where it's like, oh, there it's, I got to get the old tram car off the track so the new one can make its way. But the mm. thing, th- the arm won't attach. We're like, oh yeah, I got to do the stasis on the one arm and run all the way over the side and, yep. and, and put this, uh, uh, send out the other arm. So like, I remember like those puzzle solutions just kind of like click back in there <laughs> since it, it's <laughs> only been awesome. a little bit since I played it, but yeah. Um, Dead Space remake, a lot of fun. Uh, there was some, um, I think there were some weird bug issues on the PC version. I think those okay. have been squashed um, where it was like not, uh, you could get soft locked uh, because of the autosave. So the game, mm-hmm. like when you start the game, it starts you, you just turn it on and it, it just loads right into your continued, your save file. Like right. you're just standing there with Isaac. Uh Somebody I know, um, Mitch, uh, from the YouTube channel, Heavy Eyed, uh, he was having an issue where he he got autosaved right as a necromorph was killing him. So as when it would reload that autosave, it would reload right to when the necromorph was killing him. And then even if he exited, even if he exited the game and tried to load back in, it would just go right into it. So he couldn't even get to the menu to load a previous manual save. Oh, that sucks. So he figured out a way around it. I think they just, they they actually just fixed that problem. He figured out a way around it uh, by like deleting some auto saves, like going into the folder and right. like deleting stuff. And um, I think they just, uh, they launched a fix today where it now loads like when you start, it actually loads on the pause menu mm-hmm. rather than <laughs> right into the right into the action. Oh, uh, but man. otherwise, I'm having a good good time with it. Good. Okay. Great. Great. Yeah. It looks, it looks beautiful. It looks. Oh yeah. Gorgeous. It's it's totally beautiful. Um, but that'll do it for tonight's episode. Um, if you can, you know, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Pixel It Pod, at Pixel It Pod. You, you, you know what it is. You've heard, you know, you've heard you know us talk about it before. Go to pixelitpod.com, click on the subscribe to our newsletter button if you want to get the episodes early. Most of the time. Sometimes I don't have time to get them out early, but most of the time I can get them out early to you. Um, you can and from there you can join our Discord. We've actually had some new people popping up in the Discord recently. Um, and if you go to the Discord, uh maybe you could talk to Phil about getting in on one of his uh vampire the 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 old timey what's the name the dark ages <laughs> vampire the old timey <laughs> well i am i i am thinking i think cuz cuz i i i've wanted to start playing uh tabletop games more often and the problem for me is that uh, I, I don't mind being the dm i don't mind i'm i'm a forever dm it's just how it kind of always worked for me and i don't really mind that all that much um but what I uh, have a problem with is being intensely ADHD and uh, and and it's hard for me to do a big long term campaign without feeling like I'm uh, I'm missing things or leaving things out or getting bored or wanting to try something new. So I think what I'm going to start doing on our discord is do some one shots here and there and uh, see uh, if anyone's interested in uh, this particular one shot and just play with it. And uh, and our Discord people, if you want to play with us, uh, the, I'll put it out to regular social media, too. But I think uh, we should make sure that our Discord people have priority if they're interested, because, yeah, they made the jump. Um, they made the jump to the cord. Yeah. yeah. So if there are any games you want to play, uh, 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 let me know. And yeah. maybe we'll maybe we'll set hop, it up. That could be fun. Hop in there and, and talk to us. Um, yeah, we're there. Anyway, That's what we're there for. Uh, that'll do it for tonight's episode. Uh, have a good night, everybody. Bye.